So welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. And today is another Guide Ice episode with my homemade ice maker. Now I'm actually filming this intro right here after all tests are done. And I wanted to take just a brief moment and let y'all know that this particular episode is not going to be quite as exciting as the last ones. I've been testing for literally weeks, trying a lot of y'all's suggestions, and only one test has kind of given spectacular results, so to speak. So I have tried to compress this down, not make another hour long video. I'm sure some of y'all are thinking, thank you, finally. Although this will be a little bit lengthy, but I did not even include all the tests that I ran in this one, because again, it was just lacking results. Actually, some things I was really excited about gave the exact opposite results that we're looking for. And we've kind of been running into that all along the way doing this testing. Now, if you would watch all the way to the end, I'll reach out to some of y'all. I need some suggestions on version 2.0, as I keep calling it, the next build. And long story short, I think we're kind of, I think it's time to dog off the test right here. I'll explain this video. You'll see why as I run tests, I'm starting to have problems with this design, the way things are set up to pull the data that y'all need. Nothing wrong with the ice maker itself. Actually, we broke my personal goal in this video, so I was very excited about that. But to carry testing further, I kind of need to rearrange things, move things around, and it almost is worthwhile just going ahead and doing the next build. So I think that's what we're gonna move more toward. So watch the data in this one. I may have tested one of your requests, and a lot of people ask why I'm doing a lot of these tests. It's your request. I read every single comment. So a lot of people ask for things I included in this video, plus one or two of my own things. And like I said, at the end, we're gonna have a quick discussion about what's coming up, what I need to make the next build successful. Thank y'all for watching. All right, so it's been 24 hours exactly. And I'm gonna tell you our energy usage is up, no doubt. But that makes sense. We're still frost free, low thermal mass and we're running wide open. Now, we've got a problem. <laughs> I have kept my outdoor thermometer in zero degree temperatures for so long, it looks like it's failed on me. I changed the batteries out yesterday, that didn't seem to work. So I have no idea what temperature that we got to in there. But the kilowatt usage is so high, there's no doubt the compressor stayed engaged. I've got it set. I know from past experience that this wide open was producing minus 10 degrees. Uh, I checked that whenever I first bought it. So. Let's see, I'll try to get a new ther thermometer thermostat and uh, we'll check everything. Let's see what the poundage looks like. Nine point five six pounds. So turning this way down made a decent amount of ice but not enough of an improvement in my mind. We may be starting to reach the actual cooling capacity of this freezer but I still think we've got a little room to go with the fans. But we'll run one more 24 hour test just to double check the numbers. Nine and a half pounds is respectable, especially as hot as it is. It's burning up right now. Has been all day. Now, a lot of people keep asking me, why do I keep tearing this out? Why don't I just weigh these and subtract the weight of the containers? Well, if you'll watch back toward the beginning of this series, I did that and people absolutely panicked did not like the idea of me subtracting the weight of these, but I'm getting ready to get back to that, so I don't have to keep dumping ice, spilling it, causing a problem. For example, I know without a doubt that this tray right here weighs 1.18 pounds. I would still have to weigh this one right here, but we probably are gonna get back to doing that so I don't have to keep spilling over and dumping the ice here. Three point six eight pounds. Wait a minute, bouncing around. Three point six seven. Let's go with that. Nine point three six. So at the moment, it looks like we are not getting down any colder, or I think ice production would have been up. I think we have the freezer just about maxed out, to be perfectly honest. So to be perfectly honest, at this point, I don't think there's any point in running these tests any further. I've done seen so many 9.3 to 9.5 pound days. I can tell the freezer is doing all that it can. And according to the thermometer in there, it's telling me it's struggling trying to do all it can. Let's build up a little bit of thermal mass. I'm gonna go get some parts. I still think there is money left on the table for fans. Let's go ahead and go after that. Then we're gonna jump right into the installation 
and uh, kind of do one whole big knockout there to really help incoming water as well as the heat that's being reflected off the building. So I think we need to move forward with that. In the meantime, I'm gonna let this build up a little bit more with some ice and some mass. I'm gonna keep bringing some tabletop ice in here. I've already got some bags in our other freezer and uh, try to build this up right now so we can get back to a more stable environment on the inside. So while I did not run a test last night and had no intentions of recording today, I wanted to point out something to y'all. It's actually been exactly or close to 48 hours. And yesterday, I threw two 10 pound bags of ice in there. I've been getting off the tabletop machine. Now I'm about to throw another one in there as well as I dumped that nine pounds of ice back in. So we increased thermal mass by quite a bit in one day and the results are quite dramatic. We've been maintaining around one degree all day. We've hit as low as minus two degrees. The 10 was when I had it open yesterday. We officially went back to what I call normal right now without a doubt because of that thermal mass. So bumping up 30 pounds of ice made a dramatic difference in how stable the temperature is in there. I'm sure the compressor probably appreciated that as well. And it's been bright, sunny, and hot today. We're about to get a little bit of rain now, but today has been horrible, absolutely horrible. Thermal mass makes a heck of a difference for the efficiency of this, no doubt, and temperature control. As far as production goes, maybe not. All right, after sitting overnight and thinking my path forward, I went to Lowe's yesterday and I bought some stuff to hook up our new really high powered computer fan in here. It's supposed to have a lot higher flow rate CFM, but I decided before I start moving into that path forward, there is another very popular request that we've had. And I have two fans in there right now, both blowing the same direction at the ice makers. It's been asked time and time again, reverse one fan around, so you kind of make a circular effect. Will it have any difference? I do not know, but let's go ahead and do that. We can do a quick 24 hour test just to at least answer that. Because I have a feeling once we put the more high-powered fans in here, unless we get really good results doing this, we're probably never going to put the low-powered fan back. But there's one way to find out. Another popular question. People keep asking, what are you doing with the ice that bounces out of your tray? Isn't that skewing your test results? I've shown it in a couple videos, but I put a very large baking sheet underneath this. It happens to fit just about perfectly inside the freezer. And any ice that bounces or overflows out of this. It's normally caught on the side or in this pan itself and I can pick it up. Could there still be a piece making it way past this? I keep another tray over here as well. Possibly. We're not being extremely scientific here, but I do believe this is catching all the ice. So I want to answer that. It's been a very popular question. All right, so it's been 24 hours on the reverse fan test. One blowing directly into the ice makers, the other one turned around and people say this will have a swirling effect and they think that it'll help pull heat off of the ice makers while we're circulating cold air back to them. Sounds good in theory, let's test it out. And by the way, I took one of your recommendations and got one of these GoV monitors. I pretty much killed my other thermostat, staying zero degrees for weeks at a time, the outdoor thermometer, just decided it didn't want anything else to do with this testing. So I've got a new one here, and the cool thing about this is it hooks up to my phone via Bluetooth and tracks data. So I can actually uh, export that data out, put it on a computer screen, and look at uh, relative humidity, temperature, some very minor things, but it's nice to have data that we can pull out. Three point oh four, not looking good. It's only eight and a half pounds. We were doing a little better than that. Um, but that's kind of back to the old school numbers of two fans in the same direction there. All right, so a test that I want to run real quick while I'm still trying to set up and design something on how to pull cold air off of the bottom and force it through a fan. We already have so much data with these two fans right here up close. I'm going to take them off, put this new high performance fan on there from Cooler Guys. Link will be in the description. And let's see if it makes any difference on just extra airflow going between the ice makers. Now the design I'm working on coming up is going to be putting this fan underneath the ice makers, hitting the trays directly and trying to pull cold air off the bottom. Got to pick up a few more things. I'm still playing around with the design there. So this would be an easy test to do over the next day or so while I'm getting all that set up and ready. So as y'all can see, this is a massive fan compared to what's been in there. One other thing I really like about this fan, the wire. If I'm going to slip it underneath for testing underneath the gasket seal, Look how thin that is. It's perfect for doing that. Absolutely perfect. 
So it's quite simple. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Zip tie it right to the middle, force the area in between both of the ice makers, and uh, we'll test this for you know, 24, 48 hours, see if production increases any. I'm hoping it does, because that'll be really promising if increased airflow will increase production anymore. I don't know if we can get any more out of it or not. And then my gut feeling says pulling cold air off the bottom and forcing it right to the trays will make a big difference too. So something else I'm wanting to do, I keep pulling temperature information from a red solo cup that I put down in the ice. I really need to know what is the temperature up near the fan. More importantly, what is it near the ice makers? There could be a much bigger temperature difference than I'm realizing. So I am going to zip tie this thermostat right here beneath uh, this bar and we're going to read up near the lid and right by the ice makers. My gut says it's going to be warmer up there. Heat rises. That's where you constantly open and close and suck in. How much warmer it is, I don't know. There could be a huge potential there to increase the output of the ice makers if we're getting anywhere near that 10 degree shutoff that they have. Wow. <laughs> now that is a fan, my friends. That is extremely powerful. That's putting out more air, it feels like, than both of the other ones did. So I'm directing the air in this big gap right between both of the ice makers. Got my thermostat up top to read. We'll run our wire, try to get it flat and run it right out. Looks pretty good right there. So the reason I always do a 48 hour test is because it's impossible to time the dump of these ice cube trays so it evens out and smooths the data. There's been times I'll pull the ice out, go right into Wayne, and then you hear another dump cycle that happened. Whereas if I would do a test another 24 hours, you catch that ice that just dumped. Um, even though the two results may be slightly different, the average is always there. So we're going to do another 24 hour test even though I'm not happy with what I'm seeing. This is the indoor thermometer or outdoor, I should say, this inside. And remember we put it up high? It's been staying, main, this is about as cold as I've seen. It's been staying 12 to 13 degrees. Now it's down to 10.8. Now that's a problem because these ice makers only generate ice. They only kick on 10 degrees or less. Now I'm assuming the ice makers are colder than 10 degrees, but that just shows how warm it's staying up top. Either one, it's always been that warm up top, or two, this fan is generating more heat. Um, my gut says it's probably always been that warm up top and it's zero degrees away in the bottom. That's why everybody says keep trying to figure out how to pull cold air from the bottom. That's something I'm working on right now. <clears throat> but my gut says that the ice maker trays are actually colder than the 10 degree air because they have some cast aluminum, metal, other things. They're at an actual heat sink and the fan's blowing right on them. But we're right there on that ragged edge, honestly of tripping the ice makers off on, off on, and 10 degrees is not a good temperature that we wanna be at. I'd like to be zero uh, up top as well as the bottom. So we're definitely gonna have to pull some cold air off the bottom. All right, now the part that I'm most excited for, did we make more ice moving more air in there? I hope so, let's see. Three point two nine pounds. Oh, we did it, y'all! We did it. I'm actually quite excited about that. Seven point one five. Ten point four four pounds. We have finally broke ten pounds. We did have it nominally a while back where we got 10.4, 10.5 pounds, but we've never been able to duplicate it again. So yes, there is still cooling capacity available in this freezer, I'm happy to see it, but let me don't get too far ahead of myself. We'll run one more test tomorrow and see if we can continue to break 10 pounds. So that means if we can start pulling colder off the bottom, I think there's a, a lot of room, a lot of money left on the table, so to speak, as far as uh, production. And my ultimate goal is to break 10 pounds a day in this hot shop. And I know when I eventually get this in an air-conditioned room, I'll be able to consistently do that. That's a good amount of ice a day. Okay, so it's been another 24 hours, and I'm really excited about this test. I really hope we get our second day consistently over 10 pounds. Um, that'll, that'll say there's no flyers, there's nothing odd going on here. So I'm going to jot down some of this data real quick. We're going to weigh up the ice. Fingers crossed we are over 10 pounds, and then we're moving on 
to piping cold air out of the bottom so we can really speed this test up. All right, 3.91. Well, not quite where we were yesterday, but for the second day in the row, we broke that elusive 10 pound mark, 10.17. So I am pleased, I'm very pleased. There is potential here. Let's go ahead and uh, move forward with popping some cold air out of the bottom. All right, so if y'all watched a couple episodes back, I bought one of these diffuser shrouds that bolts right onto the fan itself. Now, it's supposed to come with a gasket. I thought I ordered it, maybe I've misplaced it, so I'll get one of those on the way, but I think it'll work just fine for this test right here. But the reason I really wanted this, what was so important was to match it up to piping. So I went to Lowe's and a couple of my local uh, big box hardware stores and PVC is outrageous right now, like $10 per elbow. And I needed several of those plus the full length of PVC. This will actually butt up to a three inch piece and you can tape it on or do something. Or if you get a four inch PVC, which is even more expensive, it fits inside, but it's quite loose. So you'd have to come up with some way to clamp it. So I'm not saying I won't do the PVC because it's a nice clean look and PVC is obviously drinking water safe if this ice were to ever get used for drinking. But for proof of concept, I found something right here that was awesome. So a couple different options. One, you could either take what I was going to do, dryer vent. This will move out to eight feet long. It looks like this would fit right in it and you could clamp it. So you could run aluminum dryer vent down there and it should work really well as far as transferring the, uh, the temperature there. I also bought some flashing aluminum flashing tape we'll use some of this outside as well as to connect this but whenever i was in my local store looking at getting pvc and trying to figure out if i really wanted to spend that much money on a proof of concept i stumbled across this it's called perforated flex drain pipe here's a beautiful thing about it it has one flared in it fits absolutely perfect on that the other beautiful thing about this is it's perforated so there is holes everywhere in this and it's 12 foot long i can curl it up in the bottom if the end ever gets clogged with ice, there's perforations everywhere. I mean, absolutely everywhere. The other beautiful thing about this is it's flexible. I can point this toward the bottom of the ice maker. I can point it anywhere in there that I want. This is actually going to be awesome, I do believe, right here. And it was $12, about what one PVC elbow was. That's hard to beat right there. Okay, let me show you what I've done. And keep in mind, again, this is just a rough setup to test this theory. So I have the pipe all the way down in the bottom. There's a big enough gap it can pull in the end, but it's also perforated all the way down and all the way up, so it can pull more air as needed. But it is kind of collapsed where it doesn't do much of that. I took the bar that I now have the thermostat mounted on. I've been testing upper temperature the last few days, and it's been shocking how warm it is up here. It's not in the same location because I had to use this bar to kind of make a support to hold this. It's extremely difficult for me to get the fan over here because the ice cubes will drop right in the fan. And keep in mind, I have to keep pulling uh, stuff out for testing over here and weighing ice. So it's very difficult for me to do that I have this low enough that it should be hitting both of the bottoms of the ice makers And uh, we can always clean this up and do something better looking on version 2.0 But let's uh, let's try this proof of concept pulling the cold air off the bottom hitting the bottom of this All right, so this is the 24 hour test with the fan in the tube pulling cold air off the bottom this is actually the second day I've had to run this test. The first day I got some inconsistent results, but keep in mind it was open for quite a while while I ran the tube, pulled ice out, set everything up, and it got kind of hot in there. So I decided to go another 24 hours to start the test. So that's why these tests are so far behind. It literally takes days sometimes to do one single test. Now, we're still not getting the results that I was hoping for, but they are better. So it's been extremely hot outside, uh, whereas outside is in the shop. I've seen it up to 101 degrees in here, but we've been staying anywhere from five to six degrees up to about nine degrees. Keep in mind, before we started pulling cold air off the bottom, we were like 12, 13, 14, 15 degrees. Crazy high. So it has made a difference, no doubt. So we're down to 8.95 pounds. And I'm gonna be honest with you, the result I got yesterday was in the eight pound range. So we've got something going on here and I think it's time we kind of move forward. I'll explain. All right, so here's a dilemma I'm at. I'm have finding it very difficult to set up fans and set up the test the way I want and still be able to pull the uh, weight out of there, still be able to catch ice. 
Now we could do scales and water flow and all that kind of stuff, but there's a certain point you got to wonder how much money and time are you really gonna invest in this? And I can see frustration in a lot of y'all's comments on, let's wrap this thing up, let's go ahead and build the next one. I really do wanna dial this in, but I have found a very easy way to hit that personal goal of 10 pounds. And I think we're having a problem here pulling the cold air off the bottom with the fan. I see two problems because again, I'm trying to collect data and stuff's all in my way. Let me show you. So one, we may be losing velocity from this fan trying to pull through this stack right here. That's very possible. Two, even though it's kind of hitting the bottom of the uh, trays and all now, I can't get it up close directly underneath. One, the ice would actually fall into the fan blades. That wouldn't be good. And two, I need to put something underneath there to catch all this ice to weigh it to kind of see the production increase without buying water flow meters, big scales that could sit underneath this and see uh, weight increases, uh, et cetera. So I've got some ideas moving forward for build number two. So what I'm trying to say is, I think this episode was probably was a re relatively boring, but some of the things I tested was some of y'all's suggestions. Some people are wondering, why are you testing these certain things? Why are you doing this? If you'll read the comments, you'll see a lot of people want to know about reversing uh, the fans in there, trying to make circulation, trying to pull cold air off the bottom. They're very valid tests, but I think we're at a point to where we're too small of a space, things are really getting in our way, and it might be time to start looking forward to building that version number two because I completely want to set this up differently. I want the ice makers in a different location. I want the fans hitting the bottom of them, but not interfering with me scooping ice out or the ice dropping. And it's difficult to build all that stuff right now, put a pile of money in this, and I may wind up with a different style freezer. I just don't know, could wind up with different style ice makers. So without boring y'all with too many more tests, I think it is time that we go ahead and dive into that number two, or version 2.0 build that I call it. Now you've gotta bear with me, it's probably gonna take me a couple of weeks to build all that to go get everything. It's a long drive for the cities, I've got to find all these parts, I have to order stuff in, and I'm trying to dry my house in out there. So I think that build's gonna be the proper way to go because I'm just not set up in this right now without making some serious modifications to carry the fan testing further. We know the fans make a huge improvement. I've got an idea in my mind that I feel very confident to invest in a little bit of uh, materials and spend the money on it, and it should make an even bigger increase. And we're already seeing with a fan, single fan up close, higher velocity air, I can consistently get over 10 pounds a day, which again was my personal goal. I think we can bump that up even further though. But it's, it's kind of reaching that point to where this is starting to kind of get rigged and I wanna do something a little cleaner, a little more efficient. The most exciting thing about this video was we broke that 10 pound goal. I'll start working over the next couple of weeks, getting all parts in. I'll keep y'all updated on the build and we can move forward with that. Keep in mind the ultimate goal of this next build is to make something that doesn't require a bunch of modifications. We're gonna build a collar lip, lift the lid up, no cutting, no freezer, nothing like that, and still try to do it DIY friendly and on a relatively low budget. Now, some of the things y'all want me to try and some things I want to try, it's definitely going to increase the cost over this, but it's going to be nowhere near the cost of a commercial ice maker or even a used commercial ice maker for that matter, for at least the ones I can find in my area. I am reaching out to y'all. I had a viewer a while back. I hope you're watching. I need your help to know exactly what it is that I need. I am very worried about putting the fans on the bottom of these ice makers when they go through their heat cycle. And if I have a fan just blasting on, I'm afraid that the heating element will not release the ice cubes because it's got freezing air on it and we could wind up tearing the ice makers up, stripping the gears out. Somebody sent me a link a while back. I could have sworn I saved it, but I cannot find it. It was a power strip and it had a certain selector up top. So whenever that one called for power, it killed the rest of the outlets on the switch. I, I need something like that, some sort of relay, something that's easy to wire up. Basically, since I can put ice makers on their own extension cord, whenever they call for power, and the only time, two times they call for power is when they heat up to release the ice and whenever they go to turn on the water valves. Both of those happened within two minutes of each other. I want what else is on that outlet to die. I want the fans to die. And then whenever the ice makers quit calling for power, the fans kick back on. If y'all could help me out, drop me a comment, let me know what I need to do that. that that's the last holdup I have for version 2.0, so I wanna make sure I can get the right parts on the way to do that. So sorry for the lack of excitement in this video. We've had a lot going on. Some of the tests weren't spectacular, but one did get us over that 10 pound mark. So it's time to move forward. The build, the new build should be very exciting. 
bear with me. I'll get that video out to y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget, we're going to do insulation and other stuff too. I might as well just jumble it all in one big build series.